And is this the first time you've received a payout from a funding challenge you passed? It's not the first time I received a payout, but I can't lie, it's the longest I've kept an account alive. How much chart time were you spending before and versus how much are you on an average daily are you spending now? I was glued to the charts whenever I was trading one minute, honestly. I would stay up from literally two o'clock to five o'clock looking for a setup that was not there, honestly chasing it. But now it's like five minutes, just five minutes, honestly looking from pair to pair. I feel like in this game, you need to be self-reliant and that's your biggest strength because I can't personally go off of your data and be confident in what you're doing because then I'm gonna fear exit my trade early just because I don't know the conditions. I'm not familiar with it. How do you feel in terms of emotionally and how confident are you just carrying that forwards now? I personally feel like Hey everyone and welcome to the call today. Today I'm proud to introduce Elijah, who's one of our recently funded traders. Hey Elijah, how are you doing? I'm good. How about you, Scott? Very well, thanks. Thanks for being on board the call today. And what we're going to talk about is not only the recent funding and the payout that Elijah's successfully achieved, but also the journey, that two-year journey. So you came across trading about two years ago, right? And then you've you've been in the evolution for around three months. I want to just kind of take a step back first and just discuss that first two years and probably the, the most recent six months before coming over to evolution markets and how, like, what was your tr style of trading? What was your consistency like? And how are you emotionally when you were trying to trade that way? So I've dabbled in every single strategy you can think of, whether it was lower time frame, higher time frame, indicators. And then the recent six months, I've been working a full-time job in construction. I'm an electrician. So I've been dabbling with lower time frame, and it was probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do just because being on your phone in the construction field is not something you really want to do because everybody's always yelling at you. So it's kind of hard to find entries. You're always missing entries. So I had the problem of staying up during London and getting probably zero sleep before I go to work. So it was always that feeling of taking constant losses, constant losses. And I couldn't really see the light at the end of the tunnel, honestly, because Every day, it's like I'm showing up and not making any money. But at the same time, I was passing funding challenges. But at the same time, I was also failing the accounts. I could never get to the payout, honestly. And it was just very demoralizing to me just because I'm waking up every single day before work for something that I'm trying to make work. But it's just not happening. So I knew I needed to make a change. And then I saw you guys release that you guys were releasing a higher time frame strategy. So I was like, oh, I need to get in there. I need to get in there. So then- Yeah, you carry on, yeah, carry on. So then I reached out, I, I got a little bit more information. I, I watched you guys YouTube and I really like how you guys articulated the way you guys teach your strategy. So I was like, okay, I definitely need to get in there. So then I went ahead and jumped in. Sweet. And, and out of interest, like, where did you find us? Was it YouTube? Was it Instagram? Did someone tell you about us? I found you guys on YouTube, actually, which was kind of weird because I thought I would find you on Instagram first. Yeah, you never know. It's always interesting to find out. Um, so you're in the US. What part of the US are you in? I live in Florida, Miami, Florida. Sweet. So I get a lot of questions on Instagram. A lot of the time, people might be watching this back on YouTube saying, I'm in the US. Does this work for me? Um, can I trade only New York or, you know, do I have to get up early to trade London? Like, what would your response be, Elijah, to that? Like, you get up at like 4, 4.30 in the morning to trade London, but do, do you feel like you have to? Uh, and have you done testing and live trading on just trading New York compared to both sessions? Oh, uh, yes. I, I've done a lot of testing on just New York. I previously used to only trade New York and it's possible to get immense returns just trading only New York. You don't have to wake up as early as me, honestly, to trade London. I, I just honestly want this that bad enough to where I wanna create a, a big enough opportunity to where I can be set to where I can be full-time soon enough to where I can only trade New York whenever I want to. Nice, nice. And And one of the things about like trading sessions and opportunity, I think really is, if you're on like a funding challenge, then 
you, you clearly want more opportunity because you want more chance to pass. So if you've got like an eight or a 10% profit target, you're going to want more opportunity to get there either quicker, not necessarily a good thing to rush it. But if you're in a time limit, like a 30 days, you've got that eight, 10% target to get within 30 days. A lot of firms now do a, a no time limit challenge, which is great because it takes that pressure off. Um, but then once you're funded, once you've got that funding, there is no minimum trading days, there's no time limit. So even if you're making two, three, four percent a month, you can make really good income in comparison to the average US salary nine to five. Like you work on a construction site, you know, you took a payout last month, which has probably come close to your monthly salary, right? So yeah. that's the thing. Like once you've once you've got funding. Obviously, one big thing is to make sure you, you're, you're acquiring funding using a strategy that's sustainable. You mentioned that you'd had funding before, but then you'd lost it and you got it again and then you lost it because your equity curve was like this. And then your emotions followed suit. So like one minute you felt like you'd cracked it. You're like, yes, I'm going to do a challenge. Yes, I've passed it. And then you're really confident. And the next week you go in and do the same thing, but then you fail it and then you dig a bit of a, a hole and then your emotions get the better of you. Whereas with this strategy, how do you feel in terms of emotionally and how confident are you just carrying that forward now? I personally feel like I'm at a point where my emotions are in check and it's so breathtaking because I've been trying to get to this point for the bitter part of two years, the whole two years I've been trying to get to this point. And I've collected immense data on the strategy to the point where I trust the process enough that no losing streak is going to make me trying to derail anything or try to change anything because I truly believe in the strategy. It's really, I can trade off my phone, honestly. I don't even need to trade on my monitor. So that's the best part too. Absolutely. And like how much chart time, like even including looking at your phone, but like you do your analysis, assuming off trading view, like the rest of us, um, like how much chart time were you spending before and versus how much are you, on an average daily, are you spending now? Oh, man. I was glued to the charts whenever I was trading one minute, honestly. I would stay up from literally 2 o'clock to 5 o'clock and looking for a setup that was not there, honestly chasing it. But now it's like five minutes, just five minutes, honestly, looking from pair to pair. So it's like a quick now. glance and then, mm -hmm. yeah, set an alert and then the phone's down again or the laptop's closed again and then you're back to work and doing other things, right? Yeah. So you're less stressed when you're looking at the charts. You're less uh, stressed when you're at work. You can actually focus on doing work rather than the FOMO of sneaking to the bathroom and looking at, looking at the phone and checking what all the other traders are in. Oh, I've missed another trade again. And then you're, <laughs> you're in a bad state at work again. Um, so you, you've got your emotions in check, like you say, and well done also for passing 50k challenge and verification on the funded trader. And then not only that, we've just discussed that before the call that you're in like the top, what, four or 5% now of those traders that actually pass a challenge. But then in your first month, you've also received payout, which is must be like the top one, 2% of, of that statistic as well. So how does that feel? And is this the first time you've received a payout from a funding challenge you've passed? It's not the first time I received a payout, but I can't lie. It's the longest I've kept an account alive. That feels like one of the most proudest moments for me, honestly, because I could never sustain an account as long as I've have now. And I just see the light at the end of the tunnel finally. So I know I can scale up to higher capital. And right now I'm working on a 200K challenge right now. Sweet. That's awesome. And you need that confidence, don't you, to execute. You need that confidence to put your money on the line, not only just to trade like a small personal account, which will grow over time, but also like you've passed a 50K challenge and now you've got that confidence to go and do a 200K. And, and you've probably used your withdrawal profits to pay for that challenge. So actually it's relatively risk-free and you're using other people's money to pay for more challenges and acquire more funding, which is awesome. And I can tell by the way that you're speaking, you've got that confidence and that's just awesome to see because the worst thing to be as a trader is emotional and, and lacking in confidence and not really having a solid edge. Like in terms of trading your plan, how much emotion do you feel actually has a part of your execution for trades now? Like for example, London this morning, like when we see a setup, your alert goes off, 
is there any hesitation or does it just like you just take that trade and then it's one to three set and forget and you know you let the probabilities play out there's no more hesitation anymore honestly because that's that's done with the weekend work that we do honestly the community back testing everything we do on the weekend is to prepare us for these moments so there is no hesitation anymore there's no second guessing it's mechanical if this happens then so we're not really too emotional about anything we don't care about losses over here because we know we can get that back honestly with one trade exactly we're always a one to three risk to reward ratio so our strike rate needs to be what minimum 25 percent, and usually we're above the 50 percent mark um, in bat testing and live trading as well so you've got that confidence to know that we're trusting in the process trusting that the strike rate will look after us and like, how long did it take? You've been in Evolution three months now. How long did it take you to actually nail down the strategy? Because we've got to think like you passed the challenge and the verification of a funding challenge. And that would, must have taken you like anywhere between four and eight weeks to do, right? And so you must have had maybe two to four weeks where you learned the strategy beforehand. It actually took me a week to learn it, honestly. Like I was at it six hours a day, just learning, going over the course rewatching the videos and applying it really. I feel like the best thing you want to do is after you watch everything for the first time around, go again and start going on the charts and trying to apply it. That's the best way to learn it, honestly. Definitely. Like not just going over content super fast once and then live trading, but going over the content multiple times and then going and actually collecting data and doing back testing on that, right? And yeah. we do community back testing in the in the Discord in Evolution community, and that's absolutely great because we all share results. Uh, students saying, "Okay, what about EU July 2022 for you? Oh, I got this, and you got that." And then comparing that, but also knowing and having that perspective that you've got to go off your own data collection because that is what's going to give you the confidence. Like no one can trade based off the da data that someone else has collected. It has to exactly. be based on what you've actually found because. I think a lot of traders are practical yeah. learners. Like I'm yet to find someone that hasn't said, I'm a, I'm a visual learner. I'm a practical learner. I think also one of the things that draws us to the charts, which is why, you know, people that are like artists and athletes, they tend to do well at trading because I think it just kind of draws them in. Do you feel like you're more of a visual learner? So obviously you, you applied a lot of the theory from the video course but actually what gave you the confidence and the subconscious learning was in your own data collection. Yes, I'm, a, I'm more of a practical learner, honestly. I feel like in this game, you need to be self-reliant and that's your biggest strength because I can't personally go off of your data and be confident in what you're doing because then I'm gonna fear, exit my trade early just because I don't know the conditions, I'm not familiar with it. But if I fully trust myself, and what I've done with repetition, then I can truly say that my plan is as set in stone and whatever happens, happens, but I know I trust myself completely. And that's the way you want to go, honestly. It doesn't matter what mentor you guys have, make sure you guys collect the data. They set you up for success already. It's just your turn to put in the work now. Yeah, I like the way that you, you worded that. You said that it's what makes you familiar with things that happen, like repeating patterns and setups, times of day and liquidity, everything that has to feel familiar. Like it can't feel familiar to you if you're just going off someone else's data on a spreadsheet or a journal, like you have to physically do it. And what gives you that confidence that, okay, after we've had a follow through on the four hour, I can take buys and discount over and over again when we've had this certain, you know, 15 minute liquidity sweep entry model, because I've seen it time and time again in my own testing. So I am familiar with it versus, oh, John said it works. So I'm just going to click buy when the alert hits, like you wouldn't have the same level of confidence, would you with that? No, so, not at all. Like, <laughs> so what's like your support network around you, like your family, your friends, who knows that you trade, Do you keep it to yourself? And uh, what's your journey the past two years been with like support network around it? Oh, my family, they, they've been supportive, honestly. They've always supported me, even though I didn't have the results to show for it at first, they still stuck by me because they know what it is to be an entrepreneur. They know how, how hard it is, especially getting into the finance game. It's really tough, especially at my age. So I don't think they are 
in the back of their minds doubting or anything because everybody in my house is trying to be a hustler. So oh, that's, I think they support me. I like that. So you, your family already has that that hustler mentality, which really helps. Whereas a lot of people watching this, like if your family or your spouse doesn't have that kind of growth mindset that they're not really risk adverse, they're more of a nine to five kind of play it safe. Money doesn't grow on trees. I've been in that situation before, and but you've just got to stick to yourself. But if you're in a, a really good position like Elijah, where you've got that support network, that can obviously be a benefit. And and how old are you now, by the way? I'm 20 now. 20. So you are really young and you know, you've got super amounts of time right ahead of you. And you you've made it work while you're still working full time. That's an important thing. Like you're not just like at home all day long just doing back testing and watching content. You've also had to make a living at the same time. So any kind of content data collection that you're that you've been doing in the past three months has been in your spare time after work. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to someone that is struggling with trading right now? Um, it can be any kind of strategy that they're, do they're doing right now, whether they're in a community or they're not, they're just feeling stressed. As soon as the market opens, they're kind of they're having FOMO, they feel they need to be involved, they're missing opportunities, or they feel they're missing out on opportunities. And they're really struggling to either get funding, or when they get it, they lose it. What would you say to them? What would your piece of advice be to them? My advice, honestly, would be to take a little time out to do some self searching. And remember why you want to do this. Remember why you got into this game. And I feel like it's the best business in the world. There's no need to rush the process. I felt like myself, I was rushing trying to get funded. So that was really what was holding me back. So you do not need to rush to try to get funding. These prop firms aren't going anywhere at all. So make sure that you're getting your data. Get your data. That's the most important thing possible. Get your data. Start getting right mentally. And then just keep going consistent. Put one foot in front of the other because you're not going to know what the next step is. I, I don't know what the next step is. So as long as you wake up every day and keep putting one foot in front of the other, I'm sure you'll be fine. I like that. Just think about things in perspective that it takes time. Greatness takes time. And don't worry about how long it's going to take or what the right step's going to be. Like you say, you've just got to trust the process and, and put one foot in front of the other, even when yes. you don't feel like it. The days that you actually get more done are the days where you start off not wanting to do anything, right? Like you yeah. force yourself. Yeah. You just snap yourself out of that. Like, oh, I don't want to get up this morning. I don't really want to do anything this morning. And then you catch yourself saying or thinking that. And I have those days still now. We're all human. But you say, no, I'm going to do this and I'm going to have a great day. And then you end up having a super great day that day. Uh, and then if you can have a great Monday, then the rest of the week's just going to get kind of look after itself. Um, but yeah, Elijah, thanks again for, for being on the call. And this is super valuable for others watching this. Um, super inspiring as well. And you've, you've clearly got your head switched on. You're an incredible trader and uh, you're an asset to the community. And good luck with the 200K challenge that you're on right now. No doubt you're going to get that passed. And um, here's to a big future ahead. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate it.